It's been dubbed the lost season. It was Canada's warmest winter on record, and we certainly felt that here in Toronto. And environment and climate change, Canada is out with the numbers and the factors driving the unusual warmth. One, there was El Nino. Hey, that is sort of the elephant in the room. It was supercharged, supersized, came early and, and was kind of dying out there in December and February. And that's when people thought, oh, well, winter's going to hit us in the new year. But it never came. Senior climatologist David Phillips says oceans were also warmer than normal, particularly in the North Atlantic. And that helped warm up the winter. And then, of course, there's climate change, Michelle. No question about it. Our seasons are different. Old timers are right when they say winters aren't what they used to be. And the numbers prove it. Looking at meteorological winter, the three-month period from December to February, Canada was more than five degrees warmer than average, according to Phillips. That's 1.1 degrees warmer than the previous record set in 2009-2010. In Toronto, our average daytime highs this winter were 3.4 degrees, well above normal and unusual for Torontonians we spoke to. Didn't care for this winter. I like to ice fish, I like to snowmobile, <laughs> and I couldn't do either. Well, we run right through the winter, so regardless of the conditions, uh, you know, we embrace it. Uh, I'm running in shorts today. Yeah, I just feel like I'm able to get out in the park a lot. It's been great. These are the local effects of, of systemic global warming. And the local effects are significant. Less snow, for example, means less water to irrigate farmlands and replenish reservoirs. Less ice coverage on the Great Lakes means greater shoreline erosion during winter storms. As for the spring outlook, Phillips is predicting a wintry end to March before a pattern shift. I mean, March is going to end up like kind of lion-like. We had lamb-like at the beginning. It's going to be lion-like at the second half. But in terms of our spring, our April, May, June, we say it to be actually warmer than normal. To put Toronto's lack of snow in perspective, for an average winter, we typically see 108 centimeters of snow. This year, we had 45. In Toronto, Michelle Mackey, City News.